Hi, Justin here. Welcome or welcome back. Um, yeah, so just a blooming update at the beginning of June, just to see uh, what's now in flower. I think last time we had some things that were in bud and uh, now some of them are flowering, so I wanted to show them. Uh, just took a look outside and uh, I did an intro uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago. I thought I'll put that on the next video and uh, the garden has changed so much now that uh, it looked quite different so uh, I'll show a little uh, before and after for that as well but uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the what's now flowering I've got a couple of really nice uh, red flowers from the Andes there probably the first things you notice up on the top so uh, that uh, Phragmopedium Memorial Dick Clemens that was already flowering for some time now and this is the last flower so after this it'll be show over until next time and uh, next to that we've got a uh, Paphiopetalum philippinensis uh, variation Robolinii, Robolinii. Uh, this is the one uh, the smaller form of philippinensis uh, I thought it was the form with the very long petals uh, they can have very long petals, uh, but this one does not have, I would say, particularly long petals. Uh, they are still growing. Uh, I haven't measured them. But I think they're about somewhere between 15 and 20 centimetres. Uh, I think they can get much longer than that. But this is a, a juvenile plant, I suppose. Uh, so this was a, a Schreiter purchase. Uh, thank you, Mr. Schreiter. <laughs> uh, it was listed as one year to flowering and I think six months later it's flowering. I was quite surprised because when I saw the size of it I thought uh, that's got quite some years to go but it, uh, it kicked on pretty well and there's three little plants in there and uh, the biggest one is flowering so uh, that plant will sub subsequently die off and the other two plants uh, will continue and hopefully provide more flowers next year but uh, yeah this is uh, I'm really happy with this the colors uh, that pouch is uh, kind of a yellowish greenish with some veining uh, philippinensis of often the pouches are just like a golden yellow uh, so this is a little bit uh, different quite like that something different and the dorsal also very nice uh, pink and white uh, stripes on it yeah very nice show and next to that this uh, big red lantern of a Mazdevalia here is um, Viciana uh, yeah, it's regarded as a natural hybrid it might also be regarded as a species uh, I'm not too sure what the current status is but what I do know is that I've seen this one growing in the wild in uh, Peru uh, when I did the Inca Trail many years ago, 20 years ago. And uh, we saw this growing in the mountain overlooking Machu Picchu. So right up at about two and a half thousand meters. Uh, it's a very beautiful Mastervalia, quite a large flower and really uh, stunning. And next to that we've got the uh, Ignea, which is also another uh, Mazdevalia Ignea from the Andes, I suppose. Uh, another really stunning one. Um, this one had eight flowers on it, but Mr. Slug got to it and ate four of them off. So that was really disappointing. But uh, we still got four, four flowers open on it. So nice display. And... Uh, well, if I can do well with it, maybe next year we'll get a, a better display. Remains to be seen because uh, those developers can be a bit tricky for me. Uh, and then we've got the uh, Paphiopetalum callosum, which has been flowering for months and months. So that one just keeps on going. And if we go downstairs, I've got some Phalaenopsis here. And uh, so this one's a hybrid. Um, what is it? Princess Gauliani Flava by Jianlong Cornigiosa Red, if I read it correctly. 
uh, yeah, it's got a nice fragrance on this one as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this one is the one of my favourite. Uh, so this is a Speciosa. Well, it's listed as uh, Speciosa. But um, I think this one is often uh, known as Tetraspis C1 or something like that. Um, where it's the one that's got the petals, petals or the sepals and petals with different colour schemes on them. <laughs> Which is really... Uh, Cool. Get all the way around there. It's like wow. <laughs> I just can't get over it. Amazing. Behind that, we've got the uh, Ascocentrum Ampelisea, which I've had uh, for some years and uh, wasn't doing very well. But uh, I, I switched it over to glass vase culture and it was immediately uh, looking happier for me at least and then I put it in the winter I put it under the uh, Mars Hydro uh, lights the LED lights and uh, it responded quite well to that and um, is putting on a little show now so very happy with that and then here we've got another uh, Phalaenopsis this one's uh, Michalizia by Jennifer Palermo by Lee Sun Hig. Can't quite read it. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of stuff in it. But uh, to me, it's just a white phalaenopsis. <laughs> I don't think it's that exciting. It's not what I expected. But uh, yeah, it's quite nice in its own way, I suppose. I'm not really that much into uh, white orchids. I'm sure some people are. But uh, I really like the colours. Alright, so what we're looking at here is uh, the little uh, Phalaenopsis chibe. It's a little miniature species, uh, quite different than uh, most of the Phalaenopsis that you might be familiar with. Uh, it's very in interesting spires of uh, tiny little flowers about one centimeter across maybe one and a half centimeters yeah so that's uh, Chibe and this is the big Cymbidium uh, Devonianum I think it was it's fully open now it's been open for Probably a month or so. But, uh, quite a nice display. The cymbidium. Once the flowers have come off, I'll put it out into the garden for the summer. I like to be outdoors uh, during the warmer months. Alright, so I've got a couple of uh, vandas that are just popping open now, or are just about to pop open, and I just wanted to capture the buds just before they open up because I think the, <laughs> the buds are already quite fascinating. Uh, so this is um, Vanda Bensonii and you can see it's got this pinkish sort of axles uh, where the flowers are connected um, and it's a sort of pink and green combination, colour combination there. So that's uh, Vanda Bensonii. And the other one is this uh, Eredes flabellata, which also has got very interesting buds. If you look at the colour on that. Uh, so not in the axles, but that's the extent of the flower uh, bud. <laughs> uh, this has also got a pinkish sort of uh, colour. Quite fascinating in their own right, I think. But, uh, yeah, they'll be opening up in the next couple of days. Right, so this is the Vanda Bensonii, which is uh, opening up now. It's uh, it's got kind of cup-shaped flowers, uh, sort of like a pale yellow with um, chestnut brown 
marble uh, overlay. Let's see if I can try to get the contrast down. The camera doesn't. You know, these phone cameras, they just do what they want, don't they? <laughs> you don't have that much control over them, so it's showing it a bit darker than what it is. But, um, yeah, what I'm seeing is a lot paler than that. But uh, the nice, I think the nice aspect of these flowers is the, the back of the flower, which uh, is very, try to get it in shot there. They've got a kind of a white back of the flower, which is quite unusual. And the flowers themselves, are so they're quite small, but this is a botanic species. So uh, it's not big and showy like uh, some of the hybrids or even some of the species for that matter. But uh, this, yeah, I like it, it's very nice. And uh, yeah, I quite like the roots on this one as well. I've got these pale green uh, root tips, quite distinctive. put it oh here <laughs> yeah this is the other one that was opening up uh van der well eridis flabellata i think it's now actually regarded as a vanda but, um, well it's just starting to open up so this is the first flower there quite an interesting uh, color combination kind of chestnut brown with uh, very rich pink and uh, some greeny, yellowish, ochreish color tones, and uh, the buds also quite fascinating. If I can get it to focus on that. Yeah. While we're out here, uh, maybe we can just take a quick look at uh, some of the uh, Cattleya seedlings and. Uh, See what kind of progress they're making. So, making. So those two at the back there. Uh, that's uh, cat, they're both Cattleya labiata. So you can see that this one's got a, a growth here. It's already uh, approaching ten centimeters high. And uh, this one's also got a pretty good size growth on it. So I think they're the two that are. Yeah. The furthest along of the unifoliate uh, species. Uh, I've got, uh, for instance, this one over here is Triani. It's got a few good growths on it. One of the Trianis, the little seedlings, they've all got growths on them, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, they're all uh, coming along, looking good. And uh, the next couple of months we'll be moving into the warmer weather and uh, they'll be kicking along. This is, oh, this is the, um, what's it called? Dinard Blue Heaven. Yeah, he's got a nice growth on there as well. So, looking good. Yeah, I think uh, that's about all I've got to show for this time. So, uh, thanks for tuning in and... Uh, yeah, if you've got any comments or uh, suggestions or if you're growing any of the same plants, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Bye. So these are the foxgloves that are uh, just opening up now. It's beginning of June and uh, they're the next ones uh, in line. So they're all opening up and doing their thing, putting on a lovely display. Nice uh, Sambuca there behind it. Yeah, so the roses are doing their thing as well. Um, got some nice roses still in bloom now. Beautiful. Um, yeah, try to get the colour. <laughs> also got a uh, foxglove there. They spring up all over the garden self-sowing, self-seeding.